the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times let me show you guys something anybody know what this is abrahamic family house of faith they say that this is fulfillment of prophecy and the war in israel is supposed to bring about this right here third temple being rebuilt so far this whole temple rebuilt the abrahamic house of faith is looking very confusing so the messiah will come the second time and here it says he will be cut off in 62 weeks so you're telling me that the temple will be rebuilt and after three score and two weeks of the temple being built, the Messiah will die again. And the reason why is because Satan doesn't want them to be ready for the real second coming. Before we get started, we are going to be studying Bible prophecy and it is concerning Israel and it can be sensitive to some people. We're not trying to make light of the situation that is happening in Israel, but we do want to expose people to the truth of Bible prophecy. Please continue praying for those who are in Israel in Palestine and those who are engaged in the war. Remember that everybody needs exposure to Jesus Christ. All right guys, so prophecy is coming to pass, but many Christians don't know which one, which prophecy is coming to pass. Everybody's looking at the Abrahamic house of faith and they believe that this is the third temple being rebuilt. And I can understand the reason why they believe that. Let's go to Daniel 9. Remember in Daniel 8 and Daniel 9, Daniel receives a vision from God. And in Daniel 8, that vision is the 2300 day prophecy. Daniel 9 explains the first half of the 2300 day prophecy. Look what it says. Daniel was praying and as soon as he begins praying, Gabriel was on his way to Daniel. Look what it says. And whilst I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, who's actually an angel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of the evening oblation and he informed me and talked with me and said oh daniel i am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding understanding about what the 2300 day prophecy at the beginning of thy supplication the commandment came forth and i am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved therefore understand the matter and consider the vision now watch this 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins 70 weeks are given to the people of daniel the israelites 70 weeks to make an end of transgression to make an end of sin stop sinning you got 70 weeks to do so very clear simple to understand let's go to numbers 14 keep that in mind Let's go to Numbers 14. Now in Numbers 14, God declares a prophecy. Look what he says. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year. So God declares a prophecy. He says each day is for a year. Let's go to Ezekiel 4. Again, in Ezekiel 4, God declares a prophecy. Look what he says. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. So God declares a prophecy. And then he says, each day is for a year. Each day of that prophecy is for a year. So a day in Bible prophecy is equal to a literal year. Let's go back to Daniel 9. In Daniel 9, we see a 70 weeks prophecy. 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel 9. How many days is 70 weeks? That's 70 times 7. That's 490 days. But if we're talking prophecy, it's 490 literal years. So 490 literal years are determined upon thy people and thy holy city to finish the transgressions, to make an end of sins. So for Daniel's people, the Israelites, 490 years are determined for them to make an end of sin, to stop sinning. So God is saying, I'm giving you 490 years to stop sinning. That's your grace period. This is your period of probation. 
once the 490 years are done, probation is closed. Verse 25, look what it says. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah and the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Let me show you guys something. Anybody know what this is? This is called the Abrahamic House of Faith. Abrahamic Family House of Faith. Where it is supposed to unite the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians. It's supposed to unite the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians. And a lot of people believe that this is the third temple being rebuilt. A lot of Christians believe this. They say that this is fulfillment of prophecy. And the war in Israel is supposed to bring about this right here. Third temple being rebuilt. Let's go back to Daniel 9. And let's see. Let's go back to Daniel 9. Remember, we got to be Bereans. Remember, the Bible says to study, to show yourself approved unto God. Let's look at Daniel 9 because a lot of people, when they think, when they say these things, they can't really actually explain it. They don't know how to. They don't know where to go. Now watch. Let's go to Daniel 9 again. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Seven weeks and then three score and two weeks, that's 62 weeks. Seven weeks plus 62 weeks is 69 weeks. I thought it was 70 weeks. Now remember, remember a day in Bible prophecy is equal to a year, literally. So we have 70 weeks. That's 490 days in prophecy, which is 490 literal years. Now, this is a prophecy, is it not? It's a prophecy. So we're talking 490 literal years. But here it breaks it up. It says seven weeks and then three score and two weeks. That's 62 weeks plus seven weeks. That's 69 weeks. What happened to the last week? We're going to get into that. Watch this. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. That's 62 weeks. The Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So far, this whole temple rebuild is looking very confusing. So far, this whole temple rebuild, the Abrahamic house of faith, is looking very confusing. So the Messiah will come the second time, and here it says he will be cut off in 62 weeks. What does it mean to be cut off? Exodus 9 verse 15 says, For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee, and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. To be cut off means to die. Watch. Exodus 12, verse 19 says, Seven days, seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. So being cut off means to die. To be cut off means to die. Watch this. Exodus 31 verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Cut off is a bad thing. It means to die. So let's go back to Daniel 9. So now it's looking very confusing, is it not? It's looking very confusing. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. So remember, what a lot of Christians, evangelical Christians, think is that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, once Jerusalem is built, once this third temple is built, Jesus Christ is coming back. Now, what gets confusing is this. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Now, watch this. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Wait a minute. Are you, so, you're telling me that the temple will be rebuilt. And after three score and two weeks of the temple being built, the Messiah will die again? Is that what you're telling me? 
How can the Messiah die again? What is this thing about being cut off? Did you guys know that this is actually not a prophecy of the temple being rebuilt? Remember, Daniel at this time is in Babylon. What happened to the temple when Daniel was in, ba was in Babylon? The temple was already destroyed. Remember, in Jer Jeremiah 17, God declares a prophecy that someone, that someone is Nebuchadnezzar, is going to come and light a fire there in Jerusalem, fire that cannot be quenched. Now, we know that that fire did die out. No one quenched it. The fire itself died out. But in, if you go to Jeremiah 17, God declares a prophecy that King Nebuchadnezzar is going to go and light a fire in Jerusalem and destroy Jerusalem. And not only that, he was going to take all of the people of Israel into Babylon, Babylonian captivity. That was a long time ago. And that's why Daniel is in Babylon. Because he was in captivity. So at this time when this, when this vision came to Daniel, when this prophecy came to Daniel, and when this prophecy was being explained to Daniel, we know that in the background, Jerusalem was destroyed. Daniel is in Babylon because Jerusalem is destroyed. And now Gabriel is saying that there is going to be a decree for Jerusalem to be rebuilt. Is that in the future? 2025, 2023, 2024? Or was that talking about after Daniel's time? Because after Daniel's time, there was a temple rebuild, and you can even read about it in the Bible. How can we skip that temple rebuild and say, nope, it's not talking about that temple rebuild. It's talking about a future temple, re temple rebuild. We can't skip that. Because Daniel in his mind knows that Jerusalem is destroyed. And now Gabriel is saying, hey, no, 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 no. Daniel, the temple is going to be rebuilt. So when is that temple rebuilt? It already happened. Remember, Nehemiah, Ezra, they talked about the temple rebuild. When it says that the streets shall be built again and the wall, in, even in troublous times, you can read about it during Ezra's time and Nehemiah's time. Remember, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Even in troublous times. Let's go to Nehemiah 4 in verse 17. They which builded on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other hand held a sword, held a weapon. Why were they holding a weapon while building the wall? Because they were building it in troublous times. If you look at the history, they were building this wall while they were under attack. So if you go to Daniel 9 again, the streets shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times, that happened during Nehemiah's time and Ezra's time. You can't skip that time, that temple rebuild, and go all the way to the future, 2024, 2025, for a, a new temple rebuild. Why did you skip that temple rebuild? That was after Daniel. Why'd you skip that? So when Gabriel was telling Daniel there's going to be a temple rebuild, he wasn't talking about the future, 2024. No, he's talking about the future, the immediate future, right after Daniel's time. That's 457 BC. Okay, now watch this. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. That's 69 weeks. Okay, so, from, so we have a, a beginning now. We have a starting period. From the time that the commandment is given to go and rebuild Jerusalem shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. 69 weeks. When? was the commandment given to restore and to build Jerusalem, 457 B.C. After Daniel, 457 B.C. We don't skip that and go all the way to 2024. Uh-uh. This was Daniel's time. So, 457 B.C. is the starting point. We have from 457 B.C., 70 weeks, 490 literal years. So, from 457 B.C., all the way 490 literal years from that is what? That would be 34 AD. 457 BC all the way to 34 AD is 490 literal years. 
Remember that, 34 AD, okay? 34 AD, now watch this. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. It says unto the Messiah the Prince. Now remember, Jesus Christ was baptized 27 AD. Jesus Christ's ministry, three and a half years, which puts us where? 31 AD. That's when he was cut off. Now is it tar- is starting to make sense? That's when he was cut off. And then three and a half years after that is when Stephen was stoned, 34 AD. And after three score in two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Why was Messiah cut off? Because of us. Not for himself. He died because of us, because of our sins. So the Messiah was cut off. Not for himself, for us. Watch this. Isaiah 53. How many of us know that Isaiah 53 is a prophecy about Jesus Christ's death on the cross? Jesus Christ's salvation for us. Watch this. Who hath believed our reports, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, talking about Jesus Christ, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. Again, talking about Christ. A man of sorrows, talking about Christ, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Jesus Christ. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Why was he cut off? Not for himself. He was cut off for us. Now watch this. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now watch what he says here. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought us a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Now watch. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was what? He was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. So he was cut off, but not for himself. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He was cut off, not for himself. He was cut off for our transgression. Does it make more sense now that you cannot connect Daniel 9 prophecy to the temple rebuild of the future? It's talking about Jesus Christ being cut off. The Messiah, the Prince, being cut off. When was he cut off? 31 AD. Let's go again. Daniel 8 or Daniel 9. Again, we're going to read this over again. Daniel 9, starting from verse 24, so that you guys can finally see that this is not talking about the future temple rebuild that people are so hoping to come. It's not talking about that. Even if there is a future temple rebuild, this is not talking about that. Watch again. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity. Seventy weeks are determined upon the Jews. That's 490 days, which in prophecy is 490 literal years. Remember, 457 BC all the way to 34 AD. That's 490 literal years. 34 AD was at the stoning of Stephen. We're going to take a look at that in a little bit. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the, the, thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin. Stop sinning, he says. And to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, that's 457 BC, unto the Messiah the Prince 
shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That's 69 weeks times seven, seven days per week. That's 483 days. But we're talking prophecy, so that's 483 years. So from 457 BC, count 483 years, that's when the Messiah will show up. Look what it says, again, from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. So this is all part of the 2300 day prophecy, which is actually 2300 literal years. 70 weeks, that's 490 days which is actually 490 literal years because we're talking prophecy. Seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So seven weeks would be 49 years, three score and two weeks, 434 years. So at the beginning of the 70 weeks is 457 BC. At the beginning of the 70 weeks is 457 BC. That's the decree to rebuild and to restore Jerusalem. All the way to the Messiah, the Prince, 27 AD. So that's seven weeks, Three score and two weeks. Was the prophecy correct? The prophecy was correct. Seven weeks plus three score and two weeks, that's 69 weeks, 483 days, which means 483 years in prophecy. From 457 BC all the way to 27 AD. 27 AD was the baptism of Jesus Christ. So let's go back to Daniel 9. From the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem all the way unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Was the Bible correct? The Bible was correct. So we have seven weeks and 62 weeks, 69 weeks equaling 483 days in prophecy, which is 483 literal years. From 457 BC all the way to 27 AD, that's the baptism of Jesus Christ. That's 483 literal years. The prophecy was correct. It's not talking about a future 2024, 2025 temple rebuild. It was talking about a 457 BC temple rebuild. That would be after Daniel's time. Let's go back. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. After three score and two weeks. After that 62 weeks. Sometime after the 62 weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Remember, this is 69 weeks. We have one week left for the 70 weeks prophecy. What happened to the last week? Remember, again, sometime after the 62 weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. Was Messiah cut off after 27 AD, after his baptism? Yes. When? Three and a half years after. Remember, seven days in Bible prophecy is seven years. When was, this, when was the Messiah cut off? Three and a half years. That's in the middle of the seven years. Keep that in mind. Let's go back to Daniel. Keep that in mind. Let's go back to Daniel. Again, after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Pretty accurate. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. There goes the one week. Where's the seven year tribulation here? There's no seven year tribulation here. You can't find that seven year tribulation here. It says, and he, that's the Messiah, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's the last week. Remember, 70 weeks. We dealt with 69 weeks. What happened to the last week? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He shall confirm the, what covenant? The new covenant. There's only two covenants. There's many other covenants. In the, in the Old Testament, but there's only two main covenants, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. So what covenant is he confirming here? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Look what it says again. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the middle of the week, in the midst of that week, right here, in the middle of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. What is the sacrifice and what is the oblation? The sacrifice is the daily sacrifice. When they would sacrifice a lamb daily in order for their sins to be forgiven. That was the old covenant. 
it says that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Prince, shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. That means to stop. He's going to cause the sacrifices to stop. How did he do that? On the cross. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, in Matthew 27, look what it says. Matthew 27, starting from verse 50, Jesus Christ was on the cross. And look what he says. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. That means he gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit. That means breath. He breathed his last breath. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. The veil of the temple. What happens on the veil of the temple? Remember, when they were sacrificing bulls and goats and lambs or whatever, they, were, they would sprinkle the blood on the veil of the temple. What happened to the temple when Jesus Christ, was, Jesus Christ died on the cross? What happened to that veil? The veil on the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom and the earthquake did the earth did quake and the rocks rent once that veil is rent in two you can no longer sacrifice and sprinkle the blood on that veil once jesus christ died on the cross that's it for the sacrificial system when jesus christ died on the cross we no longer have to kill lambs sacrifice lambs and sprinkle the blood on the veil of the temple that's done so in Daniel 9, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's the last week of the 70 weeks prophecy. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. That's it, to the, that's it for the sacrificial system. We no longer have to kill lambs and sprinkle the blood of the lambs on the veil. The veil is now torn in two. So in the middle of the week, in the in, remember, a week is seven days. Seven days equals seven years in prophecy. In the middle of seven years, that's three and a half years. In the middle of seven years, Messiah will be cut off and he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. In the middle of the seven years, that's three and a half years. By the way, Jesus Christ was baptized 27 AD, he then started his public ministry three and a half years. After the three and a half years, he was cut off. He was put on the cross. He died for our sins and he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. What did it say again? What did it say? Verse 26, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. And verse 27 says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the middle of the week, three and a half days, which is prophetic, which means three and a half years, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Jesus Christ was right on time. This is not talking about a future 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026 temple rebuild. This was in the past, future to Daniel, but in the past to us. To Daniel, this is future. Because after Daniel's time, they started to rebuild the temple again. And from that time, 457 BC, all the way to the Messiah, the Prince, 27 AD, 483 literal years. 483 prophetic days, but literal years. Jesus Christ was right on time. Jesus Christ was right on time. What happens now to the rest of the week? The three and a half years. Remember, after the three and a half years is what? 34 AD. At 34 AD, that, that was at the stoning of Stephen. What was Stephen talking to the people about? When Stephen was stoned, what was he talking to the people about? He was proclaiming to the Jews and to the Israelites the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look what Stephen was saying. Stephen was proclaiming to the Jews the gospel. Look what he's saying. Look what he's saying at the very end. Look what he says. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. That's Jesus Christ. So Stephen was saying, hey, look, I'm trying to tell you guys about Jesus Christ. But you you wanting to stone me. And then he said, your fathers did the same thing. They were talking about the, the, the coming of the Messiah and, and they were stoned. Are you going to stone me? Are you going to stone me? 
He says, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, Jesus Christ, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Telling the Jews, you have not kept the laws? Look what it says. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Look what he says. Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, standing on the right hand of God. Do you think the Jews like this? The Jews did not like this. Even Jesus was telling them, hey, you're going to see me standing on the right side of God, on the right hand of God. And the Jews wanted to stone Jesus. Look what they did. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him, Stephen, with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul, who later, be later became Paul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he said this, he fell asleep. That means he died. They stoned Stephen to death. That was it. For the Jews, for the nation of Israel. That's it. A lot of people are looking at the nation of Israel and saying, Hey, look, this is God's people. Yes, at the, at the beginning, that was God's people. At the very beginning, that was God's people. But look what Jesus Christ said. Matthew 21. When he was talking to the Jews, look what he said. Did ye, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation that brings forth the fruit thereof. He said it is given to a nation that brings forth the fruit thereof. Hold on a minute. If Israel was the nation that was supposed to be God's chosen people, why then did Jesus Christ say, the kingdom of God is taken from you and given to another nation? That's it for the nation of Israel. They are no longer God's chosen people. Yes, the nation of Israel can still become God's chosen people, but it is no longer literal Israel that are, that are the chosen people. Look what, look, what, look what Romans 2 says, starting from verse 25. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keepeth the law. Circumcision, that's you being a Jew. Only Jews get circumcised. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. So you become a Gentile. Even if you're a Jew... You become a Gentile if you don't keep the righteousness of the law. If you do not keep the righteousness of the law, you are no longer God's chosen people, the Israelites. So this is not talking about literal Israel. It's talking about spiritual Israel. So you don't become God's chosen people because you are literal Israel. You become God's chosen people because you are spiritual Israel. You get rejected as God's people if you don't keep the righteousness of the law. It says your, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. You are, now, you are no longer Israelite. You become Gentile. Uncircumcision. How can an, an, a, a literal Israelite become a Gentile? If they, don't keep the, if they break the law, if they don't keep the righteousness of the law, their circumcision is made uncircumcision. Look what it says. Therefore, if the uncircumcision... The Gentile, keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly in the flesh. He is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. Yes, Israelites are the chosen people. 
But we can become grafted in. Gentiles can become grafted in. Why? Because it's not about literal Israel. It's about spiritual Israel. There are many Israelites out there that are literal Israelites, but are not spiritual Israelites. And because they're not spiritual Israelites, they're Gentiles, they're heathens. When you become spiritual Israelites, then you are literal Israelites. A lot of people are looking at the promised land, Canaan. The promised land, Israel. A lot of people in these last in these in these end times looking at Israel. Oh, this war in Israel. Yeah, there's this war, Palestine versus Israel. God is coming soon. The temple is about to get rebuilt. God is coming soon. We just learned that this is not talking about the future temple rebuild. This is the temple rebuild after Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah. We've confirmed that clearly in scripture. So even if there is a temple rebuild in Israel, Daniel 9 is not talking about that. There is no seven year tribulation in Daniel 9. A lot, a lot of people think that there's going to be a secret rapture. After the temple is rebuilt, there's a secret rapture. We've just confirmed that it doesn't make sense. And the reason why Satan is deceiving people into thinking that there's going to be a temple rebuild is because Satan doesn't want them to be ready for the real second coming. A lot of people think that the second coming, Jesus Christ is going to touch the ground. That's Zechariah 14. But Jesus Christ touching the ground is actually after the millennium, not before the millennium. When Jesus Christ comes the second time, he's not going to touch the ground. Watch this. Matthew 24, starting from verse 29, says this. Immediately after the tribulation, not before, after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of God, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. A lot of people think the tribulation and the second coming or the rapture is not the same event. I'm not saying that it's the same event. I'm just, I'm just saying that it's going to happen simultaneously. Look what it says again, immediately after. The tribulation of those days. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Remember this, okay? After the tribulation of those days shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power. Remember that, okay? What happens after this? Watch this. First Thessalonians 4. Verse 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Is this at the second coming? We just read Matthew 24. After the tribulation, Jesus Christ is going to come and descend in the heaven, in the clouds, it says. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we will meet him in the air. Is he going to come back down? Zechariah 14. Or are we going to go up to heaven? In Zechariah 14, it says that he's going to come down. But in John 14, look what it says. In John 14, it says that we are going to go up. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Pause. Where is the Father's house? In heaven. Father's house is in heaven. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go where? to my father's house, to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. So if I go, I will come again. If I go prepare a place for you, where? In heaven, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, up there, there you may be also. Where I am, up there, there you will be also. Is that clear? When Jesus Christ comes again, where, are we gonna, where is he going to take us? To the Father's house. 
So then what happens to Zechariah 14? Watch this. Zechariah 14. B by the way, before we get to Zechariah 14, let's go to, let's go to Revelation 20. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven having a key of the bottomless pit, the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay? And, he, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, until the thousand years should be fulfilled. So Satan is bound for a thousand years. Okay? And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw souls, the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their right hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So that same thousand years where Satan is bound... That same thousand years is going to live and reign with Christ. Where? Here on earth or up in heaven? Here on earth or up in heaven? Watch this. But the rest of the dead, that's the wicked, live not again until the thousand years were finished. So remember, the thousand years. During the thousand years, Satan is bound in a bottomless pit. The rest of the dead, the wicked, did not live again. That means they're dead for a thousand years. So Satan is bound a thousand years. The wicked are dead for a thousand years. And we who are alive will reign with Christ for a thousand years. Is that clear? Where are we going to reign though? Where are we going to reign? Let's take a look at that in a little bit. Watch this. In Jeremiah 25, look what it says. Jeremiah 25, the state of the earth when Jesus Christ comes back and then takes us to heaven, Jeremiah 25. Remember, in 1 Thessalonians 4, in verse 16, it says, And the Lord shall come, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trump of God. So he's going to shout, okay? His voice, he's going to shout. Look what it says in Jeremiah 25, starting from verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout. As they that tread the grapes against, the in, against all the inhabitants of the earth, a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. That means they will be slain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day, Jesus Christ's return, from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented. They will not be buried, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the earth. So all the wicked are going to be dung on the earth. The righteous are going to be taken up into the air. Where are they going to go? To heaven. All the wicked are going to be dung on the earth. And they will be here for a thousand years. Dead. It says in Revelation 20. I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. So then what about Zechariah 14? Watch this. Watch this. Let's go back to Revelation 20. Watch this. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. Wait a minute. I thought everybody was dead. Remember what it says right before that? That the rest of the dead shall not live again until after the thousand years. Now here we are after the thousand years. After the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed again. And right after the thousand years, also the wicked will live again. Remember, before that, for the thousand years, they will be dung on the earth. They will not even be buried on the earth. Actually, in 2 Thessalonians, it tells us that the wicked are going to be slain or be destroyed by the brightness of the coming of Jesus Christ. So they will be dung on the earth 
no one will be alive here to bury the wicked. Because all of the people that are alive are the righteous and they are up there in heaven. So the dead are going to be stacked up on one another. The dead will literally bury the dead. Remember that? When Jesus Christ said, let the dead bury the dead, the dead are literally going to bury the dead. Now watch, again, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations, which are also resurrected during this time, because this is after the thousand years. The rest of the dead live not again until after the thousand years. These are the wicked that resurrected after the thousand years, which are in four in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to what? To battle. And then it says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. Well, here it seems as if the saints were already down here. Watch this. Chapter 21, starting from verse 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Where was, where was she? She was up in heaven, coming down. She was up in heaven, coming down as a bride adorned for her husband. So, in Revelation 20, they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. That camp of the saints is the New Jerusalem. This is when the New Jerusalem was already on their way down. And look what it says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. That's the New Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now, do you guys see? This is when the new Jerusalem is coming down from heaven because we were in heaven for a thousand years. This was when the new Jerusalem was coming down from heaven and then the wicked come past the saints about the camp of the saints or the city about and then God out of heaven rained fire and brimstone on the wicked and devoured them. Why did they come past the camp about? Because they were getting ready for battle. Again, it says, And when the thousand years have expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. Right when the new Jerusalem is coming down, they come past the camp of the saints and the beloved city, that's the new Jerusalem, and then fire came down from heaven out of God to devour the wicked. Let's go to Zechariah 14. Let's bring this to a close. Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Is this after the millennium or before the millennium? This is after the millennium. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. The reason why Jesus Christ does that is so that the New Jerusalem can come down on that valley. So this is after the millennium, not before. After. Before the millennium, we will go up in the air and we will go to heaven with Jesus Christ and we will reign for a thousand years in heaven. Now, we don't have time to explain what we're reigning for. We're going to be judging, actually, it says in the Bible. Paul says, know ye not that ye shall judge angels? That's what the, the, the millennial reign is about. We are going to be judging during the millennium, but we don't have time to study that right now. So, Jesus Christ Touching the ground is not before the millennium, it's after the millennium. So, what we have just covered in this study here. Number one, Daniel 9 is not talking about a future 2023, 2024, 2025, 26, 27, 28 temple rebuild. Even if the temple is rebuilt in the future, 
from today, that is not what Daniel 9 is talking about. Daniel 9 was talking about 457 BC, all the way to the Messiah, the Prince, 27 AD, 483 literal years, prophetic days. That's 69 weeks. That seventh week is the ministry of Jesus Christ and the stoning of Stephen. In the middle of the seven years, three and a half years, remember, the, the, the ministry of Jesus Christ is three and a half years. In the middle of the seven years, three and a half years, the Messiah shall be cut off, it says. And the Messiah was right on time. That prophecy was right on time. The Messiah was cut off in the middle of the seven years. That is 31 AD. He confirmed that covenant in that last week, seven years, until Stephen was stoned at the end of the seven years. There is no seven-year tribulation found in Daniel 9. You can't find it anywhere. So the evangelical interpretation of that prophecy does not make sense. And the reason why Satan wants you to believe that prophecy, the reason why Satan wants you to believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back and touch the ground, watch this. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For what? For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. What if, what if Satan is wanting people to be deceived about the second coming of Jesus Christ, that when Jesus Christ comes, it's going to be after the temple rebuild, that when Jesus Christ comes, he's going to touch the ground. What if he wants people to believe this because he's getting ready to impersonate the false second coming of Jesus Christ? This second coming where people think that the thousand year reign is going to be on earth. The second coming where people think that Jesus Christ is going to touch the ground. The second coming where people, that people believe is going to be after the temple rebuild. Can you imagine all these people seeing all these things happening? Temples being rebuilt. Jesus Christ coming down. Touching the ground. That's him. Thousand year millennial reign on earth. But that is the wrong prophecy. It is a false prophecy. If you guys were blessed by this prophecy study, please like and share. Remember, Jesus Christ said, I have declared the future from the past so that when it does come to pass, you might believe. Prophecy is there to help people with their unbelief. So if we want to help people with their unbelief, please like and share this particular video. We also want to give a special shout out to everybody who's been supporting this ministry. If you guys want to support, you can do so by praying for this ministry. We do appreciate the prayers and the words of encouragement. You all can also support this ministry by donating at schoolforprofits.tv. The link is in the description box below or by purchasing anything at our store at sfpmerch.shop. Here is where you can find our CMOS immunity packs, kingdom apparel, and books. Thank you all for your support and praise God always.